You know, RGB is one of those things that uh, triggers a lot of people and it's not the lights themselves that people don't like, it's the marketing behind it. Well, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try and show you how NZXT has sort of taken the approach to customizable lighting in your system, and this will work in any case on the market. So, if you guys wanna see how to actually light up your system and take full control over the customized illumination, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch this. You know what, guys? I got new merch. It's available now, crowdme.com slash jc2cents. We got zip up hoodies, we got tri blend, we got a new logo. I digress since 2012. It's a digress logo. You guys have been asking for that. But anyway, we're all going to. We got all kinds of stuff zip up hoodies, beanies, polos. Don't take my word for it because obviously I can't do this ad. So just look in the description below and you guys will find the link. Thanks. <laughs> So full disclosure, this video is sponsored by NZXT. They did send over everything here for us to look at. Um, also too, this is not my first time taking a look at the Hue system. We've used it in previous builds in the past. You guys have seen me use it in plenty of different builds. Uh, in fact, the, I don't remember what version it was of Skunk Works, but back in the day, Skunk Works actually had the original Hue system, which I used to light up uh, that giant SMA8 case. So we've got a few products here that we're gonna take a look at. They've expanded upon the Hue line. Obviously it's called Hue 2 now because it's a second generation Hue, but since the first one came out, we've ended up with a few extra accessories. So obviously we have the um, e, or AER RGB fans. These are, of course, digital addressable RGB fans that are lit on the outside, not the center hub letting light spread across the blade like typical. This one actually has fully addressable ring around the outside of the fan. We have two ambient lighting kits, and this is something that I, if you guys have followed my Instagram for any length of time, you remember I showed a picture of my green uh, and purple setup, and then I had the lights illuminating on the wall and around the desk. Those were actually the ambient lighting kits. Which is kind of nice about this, is the fact that you can have now your ambient light, which is either behind the, the, the monitor or the desk or wherever you're gonna mount it, integrate with your system lighting. So instead of having to have a separate control and a separate remote or whatever, if you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's and buy just a basic RGB kit, this ties in to your system. So it can turn off with your system, it can turn on with your system, it can expand. So you can have the lighting kind of move from the system to the, to the ambient and dance and do all kinds of stuff you want, or just set it as a static color or whatever. We've also got right here, um, this is the actual hub. This is the Hue 2 hub. This is where everything connects to. This is where you're gonna connect your fans, you're gonna connect your case lighting, you're gonna connect your ambient kit. Actually, the ambient kit has its own. We'll talk about that separately. But this is the central location that everything plugs into that is also going to provide all the power and stuff you need for your digital uh, lighting. And then uh, that plugs into USB header on your motherboard. Also, too, we have two newer things here that I haven't personally used yet that we're gonna kind of take a look at today. We've got an underglow kit, which I think is kind of hilarious, but not really because I've actually taken adhesive strips of RGB and mounted them under, under cases before. But this is designed as an underglow accessory kit. It's rigid. We'll take a look at that as well. And then this one, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. It is an RGB cable comb. So basically you put this on your 24 pin, your eight pin and your six pin, and you can have these also illuminate inside of your case. So if you wanna light all the things, you can do that. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna take this H500 Overwatch Edition case, which they sent along with this. I didn't even know this was coming, so this is a bit of a surprise. Um, I have not played a whole lot of games of Overwatch, because I'll be honest, I was really bad at it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all this, we're gonna install it in this, and I'm gonna control it through via USB from another computer, so that we can show you what it looks like when everything is in there. So the nice thing about the fans is the fact that they do have obviously a PWM controlled uh, fan hub. So you can plug this into your motherboard and control it with your CPU load. But as you can see, they also have an in and an out for the RGB uh, actual power and digital addressable RGBs themselves. So you don't have to have, if you have three fans on a radiator, you don't need three different harnesses going to the hub. You just need one going into the lead fan and then you can daisy chain them using these cables right here. So I just thought that was kind of neat to show is that I can, when I put the 120 on the, on the back and the 140 on the top, I will just have one cable connecting these two They'll both need their own PWM plugged into power, obviously, to spin, but we can still control the lighting with just one cable going to the fan and another one going to the other fan.
Okay, so obviously everything's hooked up. And as you can see, we put it on everyone's favorite mode being RGB spectrum. So I'm using my laptop to actually control this because as you can see, we didn't actually build a computer in this case, but that just goes to show uh, it doesn't really matter because it connects to your motherboard via USB plug that goes directly onto the motherboard header. Or in this case, I took a USB to micro USB plug or connector plugged it into that. And so I'm connecting it to cam, which is on my Razer laptop right now. So we've got everything hooked up and I've got to tell you, when I first saw the cable combs, the, I was kind of like, come on guys, really cable combs? But Phil and I have been looking at this and we kind of agree that cable combs are our favorite part. They, they actually do a really good job at diffusing the light. Okay, and let me go ahead and change this because it's starting to annoy me. Boom, okay, so you see how bright the lights actually are? Anyway, so the, the cable combs are extremely bright, but they also are very well diffused. It's a nice even light across it. You can kind of see on the back right here, they've got a PCB on them as well. Lots of wiring to have to deal with, so it's gonna add some clutter, so you're just gonna have to be really good with your wire management. But if you take the time to, to comb your cables through those particular comb grooves, you can see that you would now get some pretty good effects on your lighting. So let me do this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off all the lights, and I'm gonna show you what just the hue combs look like. Why is, why are the combs? Ah. Okay, wait, let's try this again. What RGB fights back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the lights right here, including the underglow, the fans and all that stuff so that we can just see what the cable combs look like. So you see how much light that's actually being put out by just the cable combs in this case? That's pretty, it's pretty intense, literally. So as you can see right here, if we just gonna go into the cam software, you can select the LEDs individually because they are addressable. Same thing with the ring light uh, or the LED ring that's built into the fans. You can individually select them and make them different colors if you wanna do something custom with them or you can use the presets. What I'm doing here is I'm just using the preset. So now I've got the, uh, the cable comb selected. I'm gonna go spectrum wave and apply that. And as you can see, we've now got Spectrum Wave going on the combs. You can also individually turn off LEDs on the combs if you want. Um, but there's a lot of different modes here. I'm not gonna go into a big tutorial about how cam works. I've done this in the past, but I just wanted to show you how well the combs actually look because they were initially the thing that we were most like, really, really, RGB cable combs? And I know that there's, they're not the only brand doing this, but I've got to say, because it hooks up to cam, I think they're the one doing it the best because of the fact that you can go in there and individually control them, where the other ones that we've seen from other brands are not DRGB, which means that they're just all gonna be either one color or all the LEDs will go through the spectrum together as a big group, whereas each individual one of these combs are addressable as well. That's the underglow. So as you can see, we've got the underglow going right there, which works pretty well. As you can see, we just used adhesive to mount them. Uh, it comes with the adhesive and then it's got its own cable to connect the other side. So you get two strips with it. And then we just put it up through this pass through hole right there. But if your case doesn't have a pass through, then it also comes with this IO shield on the back, which just has a plug that then the strips will plug into that. And then this will plug into your hue controller and then you can control your underglow. But we just decided to run it through the bottom of the case. And as you can see the same thing, um, Boom, so we can play with all those different modes. We've got, of course, the spectrum wave, which everyone loves because it shows all the colors. So you can make it slower. Or you can just turn every single thing to a different mode. So, I mean, yeah, there's lots of LEDs that can do things, but you know what my favorite mode in all of this is? Are you ready? That one. But that's one of the cool things about RGB is you can make it any color you want. Sure, we all get a little bit irritated with some of the marketing behind RGB, but that's why I decided to go ahead and do this video because I was like, this is a hard sell to talk about lighting in a system. But I've gotten a lot of messages asking me what lights I use in my builds because people have always noticed that I have, like Skunk Works has UV lighting in there as well as RGB. Every system I've ever built, built pretty much has RGB lighting in it. I just usually set it to some sort of a fixed mode. And then if I just want to have fun, you know, we can, we can do the whole spectrum wave and stuff. And that's the point of it, is taking control. And the nice thing about NZXT is the fact that they do it all through a control box and a single piece of software. Where if you have it hooked up to your motherboard, if you've ever used any of the built-in motherboard uh, RGB software, half the time it resets on you or you get very little control or you have to deal with third-party support where DRGB or digital RGB doesn't communicate the same on this device versus this device and you get a lot of convoluted 
non-communication that happens or it forgets your settings entirely. The nice thing is with this ecosystem, at least you can control all of it. And the nice thing with the Ambient Kit is they actually have two different sizes. They're designed for either 16 by nine monitors or 21 by nine monitors. Um, let's see, this one's 26 to 32 inches for 16 by nine or 21 to 25 or 34 to 35. And they come with all the adhesives, all the power plugs you need, the long extension cord so that you can plug USB into your system to control it. And like I said, it's something I've been using. If you've seen my old Instagram post, I mentioned this at the beginning, uh, Skunk Works and my desk and all that, before I moved my home office, was set up with the Hue system everywhere, including the ambient lighting. And it was kind of neat to, to have it set up to my game because there are some game profiles that can be controlled by NZXT Hue where like bomb diffusing with CSGO would cause all your lights to start flashing red so you knew that there was a bomb that was planted. It's pretty neat. So um, yeah, if you guys wanna learn more about this, there's a link down in the description below. You can go and check out the NZXT Hue uh, 2 ecosystem. And the best part is that uh, it's removable. They can go in to any of your systems. So we obviously use the H500i to do this, but it comes with four of these strips uh, for the actual light strips themselves. And you can have four controlled per header on the Hue 2 uh, control box. And there's four headers. So you could technically have what, four, eight, 12, 16, yeah, math. So you can have 16 strips on a single box if you wanted, and you can have more than one box in your system as long as you have enough USB headers. Or you can do like we did, one uh, daisy chain of three strips, one underglow, our lights, and then our cable combs are all hooked up to a single box. So there you go, guys, lighting. It's one of those things that uh, people get super salty about because of the marketing behind it, but there's no better way to take control of the look and feel of your system than by having uh, a custom set of lights installed. So tell me what you guys think down below and what systems you guys like to use when it comes to making your system illuminate. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. Audio check. <laughs>